Okay, so no thanks. Um, I, mean, th I mean, there's different levels of consciousness and uh, there's a lot of, lot of tools for dealing with a lot of things and they're all good. I mean, I, I tend to work more from um, a non-dual perspective or of course a miracles perspective is one method of doing that. But absolutely, you know, I'm, a, I'm also a hypnotherapist and a lot, of the a lot of the therapeutic tools are about bringing up feelings and thoughts so you can release them. So, you know, so if you watch a horror movie, it'll bring up a lot of stuff that can be processed through and transcended or felt through. So that can be, you know, if I was working with someone, I'd get them to re-experience and then process through uh, whatever they're feeling. So it's, it can be a good way of processing. As you get to, I mean, the tools that I, which I'll be sharing a bit later on today, hopefully, are like feel the feelings. Uh, and feel the feelings could theoretically be used with, a uh, horror movie, for example. So what you'd do is you'd, you'd watch a bit of something that would trigger you, or you imagine something that would trigger you, and then you allow the emotions to come up, and then you feel them out and release them. Or um, with, uh, with the horror movie, you see, the thing with uh, the ego, the ego, um, what the underpinnings of the ego are attraction, uh, attractions and aversions. So what creates the ego is it enjoys certain things and it's attracted to them and it's repulsed by certain things and it's averse to certain things. So like my ego would love donuts, you know, or my ego, well, my ego would probably love a horror, horror movie. So uh, but what, what it wouldn't like, probably doesn't like tax, doing taxes. So it's like, you know, it wouldn't like, like so it'd have an aversion to taxes and it would be, I think, but you know, with, when we're talking, so, all those tools and going to therapy, therapy like let's talk about your childhood and what happened or let's talk about your attraction to armies. I mean they're, they're, all, they're all tools with certain levels of power for, for releasing the ego and, and the problems. Doing a 12 step program has a different level of power in you invoke grace so you pray to God for you know to, to release your resentments or your fears or whatever it is. When you're doing uh, the work that, at the level of this group what we're doing is we're trying to disappear the ego's attractions or aversions to everything in the world. So, doesn't mean. So, what does that mean? Uh, I'm not saying that anyone should do that, but this is what the, I do. The Course in Miracles. This is a Course in Miracles group, so it's not really a therapy group as such. So, in a therapy group, I might say, well, let's talk about our childhood now. Uh, everyone, let's talk about our childhood for a few hours and and, and discuss that. But here, what we're doing is we're dissolving the attractions and the aversions of the ego so that we get into the holy instant, or we get into the eternal now, where these pro and then what ha unfolds through the, the holy instant is not, is not run through the, shall we say, the operational software of the ego. Uh, and so it would be like, if you're in the holy instant, like a horror movie could be watched, but it wouldn't be an ego attraction because that would be something that would be resolved. One would be transcending. Uh, and in the holy instant, one could eat a donut, but it wouldn't be the ego that would be eating the donut, you see. Or in the holy instant, if, if, uh, if a man with a machete ran in the room, you know, it would be it would be it would be the holy instant which would either stay or not stay, but it wouldn't be the ego's aversion to that. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Uh, what I'm talking about, but when you're getting to, you know, at, you know, therapy has its place. Uh, shadow work has its place. Uh, every, I mean, I'm not saying anything is right or wrong, but in terms of in terms of dissolving the ego, one is dissolving uh, one is dissolving those those actions arising from the level of the ego, i.e. the level of separation. So am I a robot of my ego that is running the software of attractions and aversions? So often then, what if, if one cancels one's belief in that, if one surrenders that into God's infinite light and love, either your attractions or your aversions, your, level, your vibration or your level of consciousness increases, i.e your experience of wholeness or presence increases. In, so, 
so the things that are from your ego, which have been run by attractions and aversions, starts to dissolve. So it's like if someone suddenly says there's donuts next door, like I wouldn't suddenly run out of the room because my attraction to the donuts next door would like would like overtake me. Or if someone said there's there's uh, you know uh, I don't know there's a well it's pretty grim isn't there? There's an ex murderer running around downstairs. So you know it wouldn't be my ego that would be afraid of that. Um, so you're resolving those. So. Um, Yes, so I think, I think, you know, there's nothing, and, and also for me, there's nothing wrong. I mean, everyone is a reflection of their level of consciousness. And there's nothing wrong with being a donut addict. You know, for me, as being a donut addict, I'm just being run by my ego at that level of consciousness. And I'm not saying it's morally wrong or anything, you know, but at that level, what is running me is my attractions and aversions at that level of thing. So I might, at a certain level, I'll be watching, I'll be drinking bottles of vodka, having donuts and watching lots of movies non-stop and there's nothing morally wrong or right about that but I'm, I'm running my software at that level so as you start to go up in your levels of consciousness what runs you is less your software i.e. your attractions and aversions of the world and more it becomes, you become more a channel of infinite grace what's running you is the infinite as opposed to your ego programs so those start to operate I think that, so what's the difference between that? And there's nothing wrong with the different levels of consciousness. But for me, you know, uh, an, an addict, when I was a donut addict, I was a perfect expression of being a donut addict, you know. There's nothing wrong with being a donut addict, you know, that was what I was. And if you'd ask me, what do you enjoy doing? I'd say, I like eating donuts, you see. So that's, that's what I was. And I would get an enjoyment from eating donuts at that level. But for me, that led to complete destruction, and I needed, I needed, to get, I needed a high level of consciousness. And then I was, and then, and in the infinite states, the infinite states for me, as you let go of the ego attractions and aversions, for me, each level of consciousness after you release it is more, is more fulfilling than the lower level of consciousness. So, you know, when I was letting go of my donut addiction, it seemed pretty awful. A life without donuts seems pretty awful, and not something that was worth doing. But actually, once you release it and you go into a high level of consciousness, you're more present and you feel more whole. That's actually more enjoyable than being in donut addiction, but you don't know it until you let it go. Like each level, when you're in states of infinite grace and presence, that is more enjoyable than being in your head trying to work out the future and the plan. So you don't know it until you achieve. And then when your ego is holding on to attractions and aversions at a certain level, it's very scary. The idea of losing something that you enjoy doing or enjoy running away from seems like life without that would be worse than, than if you let it go but actually as you process it and release it and you go to the next level my experience is each level is more free and more enjoyable and more present than the level but at that level where you've lost the donuts or you've lost the horror movie addiction uh, that would, it would seem more awful to let it go and actually, as you let it go, it is more awful. Like if you, on day one of stopping your donuts, you feel more awful than when you're having your donuts. But later on, as you become free of the donuts, you feel far more happier than you were when you were thinking life was all about donuts. So that's a, that's a bit of a tongue-in-cheek thing. And it's not saying anything is wrong or right with any level, and not that there are many levels and there are many ways of processing and there are many ways of living. I'm not trying to tell anyone what to do or pass moral judgment on different levels of consciousness, but I'm just sharing my experience that when I've let things go from my ego, my experience afterwards has been more free and more happy and more present. That's all I'm, all I'm saying. <clears throat>